Welcome to the Enterprise Excellence Podcast, where our purpose is to help create a better future. Learn from our world's experts how to improve your organization sustainably. Learn how to achieve and sustain an excellence journey for yourself, others, and the planet. And I'm your host, Brad Jevons, coming to you from Brisbane, Australia. We are proudly brought to you in association with SA Partners, a world-leading business transformation consultancy. SA Partners are a truly purposeful company focused on helping organisations achieve sustainable improvement for themselves, others, and the planet. So today, Brad and I will be doing a short and sharp overview of Agile in any and every industry. This is already our wrap-up of the quarter, Brad. Yeah, it's gone quick, hasn't it? It has, yeah. We're up to episode 130. Yeah, it's wow. It's crazy. It seems like yesterday that we started. I know. Gosh, we've come a long way. Yeah, and it's the mm. fourth year. I can't believe that either. Fourth year of yeah. podcasting together. Yep. And such amazing guests and amazing knowledge and information. Like I've gained so much and learned so much through the journey too. So it's been been brilliant. I hope our listeners have too. Yeah, and I have too. I'm lucky enough to edit each episode and I'm learning a lot too each week. Yeah. Um, so, Brad, we're um, talking about Agile in any and every industry. Why are we talking about that today? I think for me, it's really important with the times we're facing now and what's coming ahead. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of challenges that are happening. I know companies are already feeling it now with rising interest rates and inflation. And it's it's going to be the fittest and most agile that can adapt that will basically survive through and do really well through these times. And unfortunately, others won't. It's a bit like nature, really. The, you know, the, the whole most adaptable survives and keeps going. And I think it's really important times that companies consider elements like this to be able to navigate what's happening now and what's to come. Yeah. I know it's all over the news each night to the particularly uh, hospitality at the moment, little cafes are putting their prices up because they're, they're finding that people aren't eating out as much now. We're trying to save all our pennies for rising costs. Yeah, rising yeah. costs and everything else that's going on with it. But it's important times that companies become really fit. You know, it's about being match fit to be able to navigate times like these. And in Australia anyway, we've had 30-odd years of without a business cycle. And globally, yes, there's been the GFC and many other countries cop that. But, um, yeah, it's been a long time of, without a business cycle. Yes, yeah, sitting pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, well, let's get into it. Um, how does Agile work in every and any industry? Like how can I it think- be applied to, it's traditionally thought of as an IT sort of subject, but now we're finding it can easily help companies of all types. So, yeah, how does yeah. it? Well, the closest thing out of the lean world is the work that Mike Rother did with Toyota Carta. And if you think of Agile, it's very much like that. It's creating a system for constant card of improvement, which Mike talks about from studying Toyota and their culture and their system. There's also another key part of Agile, which is the uh, coaching card. with leaders very much empowering, creating autonomy with their people, but also that level of accountability and then coaching to really develop and grow the best out of the people. What Jeff Sullivan and Ken Schwarber have done is basically distill down a simple formula and structure, I should say system, that a company can use and actually create agility in either project teams or across their whole organisation, totally connected from you know, the senior executives to frontline. And that's the beauty of Agile is learning about it. You can actually learn how to make Toyota Carter happen, how to get a culture of scientific thinking and innovation and improvement every day, how to truly lead this type of culture and this type of organisation. And ultimately the result is that agility that you get. Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying Agile has got its base in Lean. Lean's more about tools and techniques. And- well, traditionally, although I think Mike... Mike Roth uh, got deeper than the tools with Lean also with the and got down to the cu- the cultural piece and the systematic thinking of Toyota Carter and the coaching Carter. But, you know, it's still like, well, how do you do that? You know, how do you create that in your company? And I think that's what Agile's done so well. It's documented and created the system and the structure that you can actually create 
that culture because it just doesn't happen by saying you want to do it. You know, it takes behavior change and it also takes some really strong systems uh, to be improved within your company. Right, yeah, yeah. So the um, can you talk about some of the kind of those real practical elements of Agile that yeah, yeah. an organisation can, it doesn't take long to learn, does it? No, it's very, very simple. Practical. Yeah. The, the best acronym I've got for it is North, South, East, West, where firstly you deploy strategy and culture so it's connected from the top line strategy and purpose and vision and goals, the true North where it becomes connected all the way down through the organization where every team ends up with their version of that, that connects to that top line vision, purpose and goals. And that's that strategy deployment. Also, you can deploy culture at the same time where you're taking the company values linked to the purpose and starting to help teams define that in relation to the behaviors they need to focus on improving to become more agile. Yeah. And then there's another element to it too, which is the east to west, if you think of a compass. Yeah. And that is starting to get real value stream or internal cu- and external customer thinking going. So a lot of what we're about is that true focus on customers. And if if you're a tradi- traditional waterfall or, you know, silo type structured company where you've got your divisions and all that, yeah. you really need that east to west where teams start to understand the total process from supplier through your business to customers. And they know the part they play and who they serve, that next person in the process or next team in the process yes. and then from there it's basically starting to establish connected high performance meetings and visual performance from frontline to top and the way that you connect that is through basically which teams are interdependent so if you imagine it you end up with these frontline teams that are executing work really customer focused and purpose vision focused and That's there's yeah. yeah working for themselves getting autonomous but also accountable and then they're executing work in a focused way, getting great outcomes for customers. And there's a bit of structure to that that we won't go into today. Yeah. But then you need teams of people above them meeting because maybe there's multiple teams that rely on each other to actually produce an outcome for a customer. So they have to be coordinated. There might be challenges that come up amongst them that need to be handled at a higher level. And that's called a, a, a scaled daily scrum or a scaled team above that. And it's that connection through to the executive or the top based on interdependencies how do we connect teams so that impediments can be removed but we can keep prioritizing and keep focus and coordination between those teams mm. and it's basically how you do it you it's depending on your company you'll have some form of this already happening because your company's already functioning they're going to have something like it going yeah. but what agile and the agile enterprise does is just takes it to a whole new level yeah, makes oh, and, and you yeah yeah and is someone from that top line um, coming down to the frontline scrums or is it more that the frontline scrums happen and then anything goes up and then anything goes up again? Or are there yeah. sort of managers from each level maybe coming down into the frontline daily scrums? Definitely. One of the key leadership behaviours, Louie, what you're talking about there, Em, is um, you know, it's leading from the front, you know, leaders going to where we create value and really learning and understanding and then based on that learning, taking coaching coaching action and that won't necessarily mean coaching the front line or supporting them it might be they need to coach a leader below them to then help get you know better yeah. outcomes and yeah. and progress forward so that's gamber or leading from the front and there's a number of other behaviors but i guess the other one i should mention it is that senior leadership really owning that system of strategy and cultural deployment and also a system of reviewing progress at least every month and helping the organization overcome challenges and and adapt if we need to like is a plan that you put together last month still relevant still yeah still relevant still bring so that's the another customer yeah yeah that's another important factor and there's systems around doing this and ways that you can learn and that's why i'd recommend to any listener looking to enhance the agility and ability for their organizations to adapt and move right now it'd be yeah. to first of all learn yeah yeah, well, I know to help that we've got a webinar coming up, haven't we? So, yeah. yeah, if you're interested in joining a webinar with Brad, just hop on onto our website and uh, you can register for that. Yeah. So, Brad, have you got an example from Agile in your kind of field and your consulting and training work that you can share? 
Yeah, I think <clears throat> the best one, of many, like there's um, the great work that BHB is doing across a massive company where they're, it's more of a lean, there's some elements of agile into it, but they are connecting from front to top, getting that real internal customer and purpose focus going, which is great. The mm -hmm. other one is uh, Priestley is a big uh, cake and sweet manufacturer in Australia. They're doing a great job of deploying down performance meetings right down to the front line and getting that connectedness right way through and using strategy and cultural deployment and then multi-level um, scrums or huddles. Uh, the other great example from a long while has been Signet, you know, doing a great job with strategy and cultural deployment and then running performance meetings there. Frontline scrum or huddle that happens in their ink factory is one of the best I've seen. You know, the ability for them to really front-led, -led, frontline owned, um, driving performance and improvement, leading culture. It's just brilliant. And that's happening in Australia, which is great to see. Yeah, There's some good examples happening out there. Yeah. Have you got one that we can upload to our YouTube channel and point people yeah. to? Yeah. Yeah. I'll put, well, we've got a video we can put up on Priestley's running Scrum or Agile in their factory. We can put that yeah. video up in the next week. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, have you got an enterprise excellence two-minute tip for us? Yeah, I'd say the first thing I'd say is for organisations and to see how you can engage at the most senior level with the company. If it can't be the whole company, start at what level you can and learn. We've got three courses that we're running upcoming that are very much tailored to generic industry, not IT specific across any industry, health, you know, manufacturing, supply chain, retail, you name it. And it's, first of all, learning about how to run a high-performance team using Agile. Then how do you create an Agile enterprise where the whole company is connected in Agile? And the next is leading an Agile organization. How do you lead an organization to create this culture of autonomy, but also high performance um, based on that? And that's what I'd recommend. Start with learning. And then after that, I'd recommend, you know, look at coaching and how can you get that constant support and energy to help yourself continue that journey? There's a great book that Chris Butterworth and Morgan Jones did on that on why bother, which is how do you keep these journeys going? It's yeah. not good enough just to get education. It's how do you then keep tracking the journey and going for a long while. I'd recommend yeah. go back and listen to the episode with Morgan Jones on why bother uh, for those that are interested. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, you think about all the coaches involved in just one sporting team, hey, and uh, yeah. we need well, they, yeah. more coaches in our professional lives, that's for sure. Yeah, these journeys go for 10 years. You get dramatic results the whole way through. But, yeah. you know, to really make it stick, you're talking five to 10 years. Yeah. So it's, it's well worth it. Yeah. 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 Agile in any and every enterprise. It's pretty exciting. And, yes. yeah, we're going to be um, the next four episodes following this one are going to be all about Agile from some of our, yeah, our top guests. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. People can really reflect and learn on those. Jeff Sutherland, and you've got there also coming in Eve Modiok, and we've got Avi Shear and all sorts coming in. So there's some great learning to have, and we'll be doing the webinar and the courses upcoming too. Yeah, cool. All right, Brad. Thanks, well, thanks. Louis. Thanks. <laughs> See you later. Catch you later. Bye, Bye. now.